Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk about wheat. Let's do a wheat review rather than a report update because what's taking place on the internet needs to be talked about a little bit here and there's not enough new to modify the wheat report. The wheat report's been ongoing for some time. I think it'll take a front and center approach in terms of what we're going to be talking about in 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 2022, wheat is a leadership market. We talk about that inside the report. But what's taking place shorter term is uh, dealing with uh, probably the energy builds and, and the cycles. And we're going to talk about that one briefly. We're going to leave this one open so everyone can take a look at what's going on inside the matrix and how we do things. I think one of the conversations that we've been having or some numerous it continues to repeat I would say in the old days it repeats by the old trading desk phone but rather it's it's more of like something that you see over text you see over uh, social media uh, posts and other things that everybody's thinking that wheat's gonna fall down the elevator shaft and this was something that it, it had to be talked about before so if we look at uh, the evolution of the trade uh, and we're not going to go into too much detail I suggest going and looking at the report and the recent updates that we've done there, uh, we talk about the longer term cycles and all sorts of things, but we're going to just look at what we see in the regular subscription matrix. It's fairly comprehensive. Wheat goes back into 1959. The report will study much longer. Wheat's got a long trading history inside the United States. It goes a lot further back than 1959, but that will take too much of a discussion. I don't want everyone to tune this one out. So what are we dealing with? We've, we've got triple up. It's triple up and it's it the computer scores it as late. It's uh, the composite score, which is the we take a look at all three time frames. This is the X bar. It's 1.94. It's nearly two. That's really high. You know, the grain markets have been pushing two, two and a half, and, and nobody's worried about that. Uh, I always say that when you see a late cycle and you see that thing highlighted red, it's also it's highlighted red because it's primary trend decline two, and it's that because we've got a two here and a you know over one and a half. This is the price cycle. This is the time cycle. Everything's primed for a pause. And and and, and when we look at the composite trend, which is all three time frames, which includes the price cycle of near four and four, and this is the price cycle here and the time cycle for the weekly time frame. That's unbelievable. I mean, that's I mean I, we've been saying that for weeks, and and, and it's. It's just due for a reset, and it's due for a reset in the daily, and I'd love to see the weekly come down. And once it resets, what we're talking about is a reset of the three time frames, which then allows for the composite trend to be much earlier than 1.94, a lower number here. And I'll view it as either early cycle, probably more likely a mid cycle, but that's a lot better than trying to buy these resets into late cycles. And that's what would that's what really the professional is waiting for. A professional has been in the core position for 21 months, 102%, but you can't force that. I mean, it's, it's highlighted red for a reason because it's primary trend decline too. I mean, it's, it does get adjusted on a longer term basis, but in general, it's saying, well, okay, if, if wheat's really going to run, you can maintain your core position, but you can't throw marginal new money at it. And anyone who's a producer of wheat is probably sitting there going, okay, well, what's the upside potential? Should I sell everything? Well, in some ways, the way you look at it is always the way you look at all mar markets inside the matrix. If the primary trend flips and it's currently up and it turns down, and we can look at the lead M and we look at wheat, and it is this number we're focusing on. Uh, we're focusing on the LTCO, and that's uh, 47 uh, for the uh, uh, LT for for the price oscillator and BW's volatility, if you have a hard time visualizing it, and then that's what uh, I'm pulling some charts. Let's go into the monthly time frame, and we'll take a look at wheat, and 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 then you'll say okay, and then we'll it'll help visualize what I just said. The oscillator here is LTCO. It's right here. It's these numbers. They're above zero, which means they're above the dotted line. What you can see is you've had a massive spike here, and, and this is the LTRV, which is volume. That needs to come back a bit. I mean, it's due, but the fact is we still have a green box, and these green boxes can be quite long. I and mean, you should really look at these green boxes. 
past 1959. I mean, there are, some of them are downright scary, but the question that the computer is studying is whether or not this current green box is too tall and is it too wide? And, and we have an answer to that when we go back to the matrix, and that's what these cycle scores are for. Anything above two is saying, well, it's a bit tall, and anything above two here would say it's a bit wide. So we have a little bit bit tall, so that means that a, a correction wouldn't be something that's outlandish and and really it, it's right here it's the 90 week run that we have in the secondary trend with two four standard deviations that's phenomenal and i'm going to talk about here in terms of the energy build the invisible hand knows and this is what i've been warning people of the invisible hand knows that these cycles are extended it doesn't mean the end of end of days and we're going to go out and wheat's going to be zero but it needs to be dealt with and they are going to deal with wheat in terms of uh, sacrificing the retail trader how do we know that we can see the energy build first the energy build was massive before this it reached minus 97 now we're way back down here minus 95 and minus 60 which is di2 it's way down there click this link here you're going to get a chart that this chart exactly now participation is 39 it's not it's not really high which is a warning that the downside is picking up it's got a lot of force it's really close to it's close to 20 which is a part or, or, or 25 which is this line down here it's not quite a quiet market uh, what's what we're looking for we're looking for a quiet uh, setup uh, we don't have it yet but it, it could be coming in um, and until we do this market is it, it, it's unbalanced and it's unbalanced and I'm going to show another chart I'm going to take this one out it's unbalanced because the retail investor is exceptionally heavily positioned in on the long side and this is another way of looking at the components within uh, DI it doesn't calculate the DI but it looks at the two major players commercial traders retail there's also the specs and then they break down even more the computer looks at everything but what we're most concerned about, or what I'm trying to, uh, the point I'm trying to make, is the retail investor, which is uh, yellow. It's at 97. The highest is 100. That means they're long. And, and the retail investor is weak money. It's weak money, and whether you're talking about wheat, corn, or anything, or Bitcoin, it's always weak money. Terrible market timers. They get everything wrong. They're impulsive. They're emotional. Professionals are on the commercial side. Uh, it, it's not what it's not the level of what the com commercials are exposed on the long or short side it's really the movement of money that makes that's the most important not what comprises the di calculation di one di and di2 right here it's really about the marginal movement behind the scenes and right now it's exceptionally it's it's generate what we call a blocking dome it's one of the reasons why you see uh, the this this red uh, dome over the price it means it wants to slow things down yeah price can power through a blocking dome it takes time i mean it, it's it's it, the path of least resistance is still up as long as the primary trend is up you can see it's up because you have bu bull t so it's a 21 month on the bull count if it was bearish this number would be over here the the path of least resistance is up but this is going to try and stop it and clearly it has I've had a couple messages and numerous messages about also corn in particular wheat's also in there i want to wheat looks good it does i mean it looks good with this huge blocking dome yeah you, you it doesn't look anything and it, what we see is that the invisible hand is leaning hard on it and you have to play this stuff by the numbers so you sit back and say yeah i'm not touching this with fresh money because this is a massive energy bill and that's how we look at this stuff so it's we still have this energy built but now price has come down it's come down since the last time we updated wheat or even we had the wheat report this is what we had been talking about for months now it's starting to come down and now the, what is energy going to do in response to that but it, it, this is what we could be waiting for but we're not going to know that until on friday so come back on friday check out the di check out the matrix and we'll probably be updating the report to modify our understanding of what's taking place everything moves through the evolution of the trade everything moves through these three primary three trends the primary trend currently is up but we're going to probably see some sort of consolidation and it's probably going to start fairly soon 
question is how long is it going to last? This is what it brings in the seasonality. We've talked about this before. Anyone who subscribes to the Matrix can see this stuff. We stay seasonally weak through June. I've said that the invisible hand is probably trying to target this. Now, seasonal trends, they do get altered longer term when you bring in the big data, long database. And that uh, changes this conversation a bit. For, from our standpoint, even 1959 tells us what we need to know. If, the, if you can't take uh, wheat down by the end of June or June, sometime in June, which we suspect there will be some attempt for a low, after that, my guess would be is this energy build is going to dissipate because these guys are not morons. They know that the seasonal cycle starts to pick up and everything that's making wheat uh, difficult to push through the system and countries are holding back the exports of their own uh, crops and, and their own uh, products of these uh, of, of wheat. Yeah, that, that they know all this stuff and they know that once probably the calendar flips and it may not be as simple as that. But when we get into July, this whole conversation will change, and I suspect this energy bill will alter itself. So what can wheat do on the downside? Well, that's a simple, calcul a simple assessment of wheat, wheat's reversals. Now, we track wheat in terms of the ETN, and I'm going to go find uh, wheat within here. And I pulled up the chart, and the chart has moved a little bit, and there it is. It's up here. I want to bring this up closer. Uh, this is just the this is the weekly these are the weekly reversals and they're like synthetic gaps that the computer creates through supply and demand zones which we call volume they don't really exist but they're really influential and and, and wheat which is w e uh, a t which is what we track but it's it's a synthetic product it's it's melded with a continuous contract and it goes back within long-term data this is just what we use to update the computer so all you have to do if you're trading wheat and you're trading it uh, through the futures uh, try and move these targets uh, based on percentage basis usually uh, when wheat breaks down through this main reversal here or, or, or jumps the creek it usually means bullish things for the continuous contract as well since that's what it's based off of it's based off of the front month uh, uh, contract and usually the back months and moves away from the front contract but it that's why you want to know these reversals so wheat's currently at 1152 uh, and you can see where it Attempted to jump or jump the creek right here, and that number is 11, 10 and a half, and 10.59. These are inside the matrix. This represents the downside targets. Now I show this stuff and keep an eye on this on a regular basis because the computer can modify these uh, zones. Uh, it, it depends on what happens within a trading week, and they're pretty stable in general. But you can see where the downside target will be, and when we frame that and this this zone within the energy build. Uh, we could have a drop but down into that 10 and a half, 10 handle for sure, and that's probably what's going to dissipate this energy belt. Probably take the daily down, probably take the weekly down. Uh, you say probably because you have no idea. I'm sure the daily is going to go down eventually. Daily is probably closest to being down. You check on the lead uh, D, you can see the daily is at LTCO is at 19. That's not too many ticks above zero couple more days of weakness and wheat's going to flip down at least on the daily love to see it address the weekly i think if it went uh, if the if we went and attacked uh, these this reversal zone here it probably does flip the weekly and that's probably what this energy build is all about it's probably trying to set up a move to take this market down before seasonal strength comes and they're trying to get the retail trader that's super super long and they're vulnerable they do not have deep pockets they don't understand that they're being leaned on and they're being manipulated or taken advantage of at this point but we'll see uh, it's a really strong market uh, usually when the retail investor backs out gets squeezed out it tends to stop on a dime usually at the reversals and take off so going forward we're going to watch this energy build we're going to watch those reversals and we're going to understand that the composite trend which is made up of the daily weekly and the uh, monthly trends, which we call primary, secondary, and tertiary trends, we're just going to watch it and see how far this can go. I mean, it's a, a weak one will take down the daily, a stronger one will take down the weekly, a really bad one will take everything down and flip it back up, and it's all going to be regulated by energy. Right now, this is a very energy, but this can go and flip off and go in the opposite directions. This is a number that's bounded between 100 and minus 100. 
We're very close to minus 100, which means there's a lot of better energy. High secondary, high high trend within that energy at minus 60. But this can flip in the opposite direction just as fast as it formed. All you have to do is create a little bit of panic. Get everyone out there and say, oh, if the sky is falling and you got everyone running around with the flames on, you know, in, in the backdrop and it's, then they get what they want. So you, the whole point of this is to understand how the world works in terms of how smart money sets up the dumb money and how it's all applied within the primary trend. This is set by the invisible hand. The current path of least resistance is up and that's, it wants to stay that way. But inside of that, uh, human beings are going to knock it around. Human beings define the invisible hand longer term. What happens is the assumption that a small group of them can control the market. Well, that's impossible. You cannot control the invisible hand, but you can push around the short term. Who gets controlled? Of them? That's the dumb money. The dumb money is exceptionally long, the wheat market, and they're just trying to go after the money that's in their pocket. And once they get it, I think the market will turn around and do something else, but we'll have to watch it in particular. So that's what we'll keep an eye on. We're going to target the next update on uh, the wheat report. So keep an eye on that. So try and tune back if you're interested in these markets or the grain markets. Certainly tune back on Friday, and that's what we're going to talk about. That's that energy build in particular. And we'll take a closer look, and we should see some more information. If you have any questions about wheat or the matrix or anything we talked about, let us know. Not thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys real soon.